we have a problem. We argue poorly. We don't argue effectively or persuasively or as ethically as we could. Now, that is particularly a problem for the legal profession. But it's a problem for all of us. It's a problem for democracy. You notice I said we argue poorly. I didn't say we argue too much. We need to argue, not in the narrow sense of squabbling, but we need to disagree, come to terms, persuade each other, compromise. We need to be able to do that. Argument in that broader sense is that's the way groups get things done. So we need to be able to do it well. And we don't. <laughs> this series is about that. It's about the cost to us and to our community of arguing poorly. It's about the possibility that we can learn to argue more powerfully and effectively. I think we can. It's about, it's about the risks that come with learning to argue more powerfully and effectively. Persuasion is a kind of a power, and like any power, it should be used with caution, ethically, because it can do damage. We'll talk also about the possibility that our arguments might not only persuade and not only not do harm, but might actually in some way, if we do it correctly, elevate, bring us together, rather than pull us apart as our arguments so often do. That's what this series is about. I hope you'll stay with me. And uh, right now, though, let's head up to my office so we can talk more about the nature of this problem and why it matters. be thinking that the failure to argue well is hardly our biggest problem. And I hear you. We have really pressing and severe problems that beset our community and the world. We could each list them. But there's a sense in which our failure to argue well, our failure to come to terms persuade, to reach each other, is as deep a problem as we face. Now, I'll get to some of the deeper difficulties that arguments cause or can cause in subsequent episodes, but merely the failure to come to terms, the mere inefficacy of our arguments, comes at a great cost because that is why, or one of the reasons why, we are unable to solve or make progress on so many other major problems. I'm not saying that all of our major social problems would be easily resolved if we could just get along. <laughs> of course not. We face real and severe problems that are going to involve difficult conversations, difficult acknowledgments of responsibility, compromises and coming to terms. That's all the more reason why we need somehow to argue better and more effectively, not for its own sake, so that we can work together. And as I say, this is a problem for our entire community for democracy. But it's also a problem, especially for you lawyers that may be listening or law students. Our profession is supposed to be the profession that helps our society argue well. We're supposed to be the profession that helps the other members of our society disagree without falling apart who helps them come to terms. We are falling short. 
and in part as a result, all of us are falling short. So the costs of arguing poorly are severe and broad and deep. Why do we argue so poorly? What, do we, what is it we're doing wrong? Well, in the next episode, we're going to talk a great deal about that, about how we should argue and how we don't often argue. But I want to say a couple of things as a preliminary matter. Very often when we argue, we're not or don't seem to be really trying to persuade or reach anyone. Many times what we seem to be doing is trying to score points or look clever so that our friends can pat us on the back and say that we owned the adversary or devastated somebody with our argument. We argue as if we were high school debaters and there's some judge that's going to give us points. Oh, you win because you were clever. That's not, that's not going to help us solve problems. So that's one reason. We argue poorly. We try to impress some audience or impress ourselves rather than even actually trying to persuade and reach the person to whom we're speaking. Of course we don't. Then another reason why we fail is that when our arguments fail to hit home, when we, not surprisingly sometimes, fail to persuade, we seek to excuse our failures rather than understand them. Instead of saying, why was I unable to reach that person? What could I have said or understood or thought or communicated differently that might have enabled us to come to terms? Instead of doing that, we find some excuse some way to blame our failure of persuasion on the person we didn't even really try to reach. We want to call them a racist or greedy or stupid or, or insular or whatever. And those things may be true of them and of us. <laughs> they may be true. But dismissing the person you failed to persuade is no way to learn to get better at persuasion. So those are two of the things right out of the box that we need to overcome. We need to stop trying to score points because that doesn't get anything done. And we need to stop blaming our failures on our adversaries because that's no way to reach anybody. Now, you may be tempted to say that persuasion never works, that no one ever is persuaded to change their mind. I don't think that's true. I hope I can convince you that that's not true. But if that's true, then we're all in trouble. Because democracy, our system to which we're committed, is based on the belief that people can argue and cooperate and figure things out as a group. That's our story, and we're stuck with it. And I want to stick with it, because I believe it's possible. Is it always possible? Of course not. There will be times when our differences are irresolvable. Should you always seek to persuade? Of course not. There are times when you should just turn and walk away. But there are many times when it might be possible for us to better reach each other if we thought about it in the right way, if we went about it in the right way, if we quit trying to score points and dismiss our adversaries and started thinking about what it really takes to reach and come to terms with another human being. That's what this series is about. It's about how to do that. It's about the power that that might give us. It's about the risks that may come with that power. And it's about the possibility that we can use that power for good, not just to solve problems, but to come together and to elevate ourselves as a community. So I hope you stay with me as we pursue these things over the next few episodes.